Hello and welcome to another coral reef informational video brought to you by Conservation Diver. Today we are going to discuss a little known coral ivor called the Drupella snail. This snail is important as its population seemed to be increasing across the Indo-Pacific since the 1980s. And although its devastating effects on reefs has not been as pronounced or as well studied as say the counterthorn sea star, it is an invertebrate that every reef manager in the region should be familiar with and keeping an eye on. Drupella snails are a small, mucerid gastropod. Although there are several species described for the group, three are most relevant when it comes to outbreaks and overpopulations. Although in our research we have found them consuming over 47 different species of coral, Trupella tend to feed primarily on Acropora and Montipora, the fast-growing and structurally diverse corals of the reef which provide much of the habitat for fishes. These are also the corals most threatened by climate change, which adds more salience to the issue of compounding impacts through coral livery. Prior to the 1980s, there were very few descriptions of these species throughout the Indo-Pacific and they were not commonly listed on species inventories or reefs throughout the region. Then, beginning in 1976, there was an outbreak of Drupella snails in the Aizu Islands of Japan, which was described in a 1982 paper by Moya. The next documented outbreak occurred in the Nigaloo Reef in Western Australia, as described by Ailings and Ailings in their 1987 paper. Occurrences increased throughout the 1990s, with documented outbreaks in Kenya in 1994 and the Southern Red Sea by 1996. In the 2000s, outbreaks were described on the reefs of Hong Kong and the Gulf of Thailand, and once again in the southern areas of Japan. The reason for these outbreaks and overpopulations, like those with the crown of thorns, has been shown to be closely tied to predator removal through overfishing and extraction, decreasing water quality, and habitat degradation through land-based human activities. Drupella snails have few natural predators once they reach adult stage, so population control is really dependent upon the larval stages. Drupella lay their eggs on exposed skeleton of recently consumed corals. As some of our members described in a 2017 paper that you can find in the description below. Once the eggs hatch, the larvae are planktonic and are thought to be able to travel up to 180 kilometers before settling down on the reef. They tend to travel as a cohort and settle on the same coral colony, most typically a tabulate coral, where they are able to hide from predation and begin feeding on coral tissue. Once they reach maturity, they can live for as much as 45 years. Although their reproductive output is very high, under normal conditions, very few of the millions of larvae produced by normal populations would survive to adulthood. As shown in the ex example figure from other spawning marine species, at every stage of development, a significant portion of the offspring will die or be predated upon. However, as plankton re levels increase due to nutrification, less larvae starve before settling. As overfishing removes filter feeders and predators of the larvae, more individuals make it to the settlement stage. Because we are discussing such a large initial output of embryos, even a small percentage of increase in survival will lead to a geometric growth in adult populations, for which there seems to be no natural controls. The overall effect of increased predation on corals by Drupella snails, especially on the vulnerable Acropora and Montipora families, is an alteration of population structure and a reduction in the health, biodiversity, and abundance of corals on the reef. Combined with other threats, this acts to reduce coral reef resilience, or the ability of the ecosystem to withstand or rebound from other natural disturbances. If the resilience of the reef is decreased enough, then any other disturbance can lead to a regime shift where the reef ecosystem is lost and very often can never recover on its own. Drupella snails have also been documented to exacerbate or lead to other issues on the reef. 
In 2013, it was found that they are a transmission vector for brown band disease, and they have subsequently been implicated in the transmission of other coral diseases as they feed on affected colonies and then move to healthy ones. In Hong Kong, they were also found to contribute to the severe bioerosion of coral skeleton, reducing the ability of reefs to rebound by reducing overall structure availability for new coral recruits. A recent paper from 2017 also described the overgrowth of macroalgae of corals predated upon by Drupella snails. In our studies, we have also described in a 2013 paper with Dr. Bert Hoeksema how following bleaching events, the snails may shift their feeding preferences and predate on a wide variety of coral species, notably the mushroom corals. Following the 2010 global coral bleaching event, we implemented large scale collections on the island of Koh Tao, Thailand, in order to manage the outbreaks before they decimated the already stressed reefs. Although no management recommendations currently exist for Drupella snails, we developed our own based on those for the crown of thorns and our own observations and research. These include when more than 10% of colonies for any single species are affected, during mass disturbance events such as bleaching, when feeding shifts are observed, where populations of predators and filter feeders have decreased significantly, or in areas where water quality has been significantly altered. In our programs, we teach participants how to safely and effectively collect Drupella snails from the reefs in areas where monitoring shows they are problematic. Our program on the island of Koh Tao has collected over 120,000 individuals. However, as of 2019, their populations are still at outbreak levels on multiple reefs. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you are interested in exploring this topic further, you can check out some of the links in the description below. Of course, if you enjoy these videos, please like and share them, and don't forget to click to subscribe to our channel. We will try to put out more of these videos as we are able, so be sure not to miss any. You can also support our efforts at creating a new generation of marine conservationists by donating through the link on our website or by checking us out on patreon.com. Of course, you can also find us on all your favorite social media sites. Thanks again for your support, and keep up the fight to save our planet's coral reefs.